uh, Vivek Ramaswamy back with us now, former businessman, now running for president in 2024. I, were you, if you were able to hear the segment we just did and heard from the mom, uh, Rebecca Kiesling, lost two sons to fentanyl, begged Congress to start treating the drug cartels like terrorist organizations and name and shame them that. Uh, is that something you'd do as president? I, in fact, I've committed to. In fact, I've, I think I'm the only candidate in this field that's been expressly explicit about this. If the U.S. military has one job, it is to protect U.S. soil here in the United States, including the southern border. And treating the cartels like terrorists doesn't just mean freezing their assets, which is what some believe. I think it means justified military force to decimate the cartels. Osama bin Laden style, Soleimani style. This is doable. And this is something that I actually expect to do as the next president of the United States in the first six months. And I think it's important to do it in one cycle because the key with the cartels is you can't give them one cycle of adaptation. It has to be done in one, one cycle of aggressive shock and awe. And that solves the fentanyl supply side uh, problem, just, just which is to what be, this is. Just to be clear, we're talking about in, invading effectively Mexico, which at least according to some is our ally. Here is the attorney general, uh, the current attorney general on that today. Take a listen. I think it's kind of a no-brainer, right? If you're going to be on the Republican National Committee debate stage asking voters to support you, you should say, I'm going to support the voters and who they choose as the nominee. Okay, so that was Ronna McDaniel talking about uh, the debate stage. We'll, we'll get back to that issue in a minute. Uh, if we have the soundbite of Merrick Garland being questioned today, uh, we'd like to play that. Take a listen. I mean, this is, how would you describe the fentanyl problem in America? It's a horrible epidemic, okay. uh, but it's an epidemic that's been unleashed on purpose uh, by the Sinaloa um, and the new generation of Jalisco cartels. Okay. Let's just stop and absorb that for a moment. It's a horrible epidemic. It kills more people than car wrecks and gun violence combined. And the question is, what are we going to do about it? Is Mexico helping us effectively with our fentanyl problem? They are helping us, but they could do much more. There's no question about that. Well, if this is helping, I would hate to see what not helping looks like. Fair enough. But if we decide to effectively invade Mexico and start going drone style on the cartels in northern Mexico, we are invading a, a foreign country, are we not? So I think there's a lot of steps in between there. And look, I'm going well, to state this at a high level. Do, wait, hold on. You said we're just going to do it in one foul swoop. You're going to declare war That's right. on, on day one. Well, let, let, me, let me tell you exactly. Well, I, I didn't say declare war. So here's the way to do it. I'm going to pick up the phone, call President Obrador, and say, look, you're, you're basically your sugar daddy is the drug cartels. There's a new daddy in town. We will help you. You will do this job, okay? We're going to supply you for a fraction, by the way, of what we're spending in Ukraine, for a tiny fraction we can help you if you do this job, but if you do not, then we will come in and do it for you because this is about what's happening on our side of the border. And the cartels are indeed treating the Swiss cheese of our southern border like a porous border that has actually created new cartel infrastructure even in the United States itself. So I think that that gives him a choice, but it is a choice that has actually one consequence on the back of it. Either way, we're going to get the job done. But again, the top job of the U.S. military is to protect our domestic interests here at home. And I pledge to do it without apology. And I think that's something that we need to see from both political parties in this country, willingness to use our military investments to actually, who would have ever thought, protect this country.